Hello, this is Dr. Leo at the lead time. In today's video, I want to answer you the eight major questions. I think it's very important. If you know the answer of these eight questions, you can start your distillation. There are many other questions uh, I will answer in the future, but uh, these are the eight key questions or the basic foundational questions. I think it's important to know before your distillation. The first question is uh, what part of the herbs we use to distill? This is a general question and uh, different herbs as using their different parts. It includes uh, flower, leaves, stem, bark, the root, or the resin. When we do distillation, the goal is to extract uh, more the essential compounds out of the herbs. I'm using the three herbs as example. This is a lavender. For lavender, we use the buds, the flower, um, before they fully open. That's the best time to harvest. And you can also use the leaf or stems, but the flower has the most or um, more, quite more the essential compounds than its uh, leaf and the stem. The eucalyptus, uh, we normally use the leaf because the leaf has the most the nutrients from uh, the eucalyptus tree. And this is the orange peel. So obviously we use the peel of the fruit. The fruit itself can be uh, extracted also because it has the aroma but the essential oil mostly stay in the peel. And also the ginger, we use the roots, and uh, frankincense, we use the resin. So the following question is the parts of the herb is, uh, do we use a fresh or dry? For 99% of the chance you can use the dry herbs, uh, especially for home distillation because it's easy to store and you can just uh, purchase online or even you can dry it at home and easily uh, make a last a longer time. Um, but there are a few herbs you want to use a fresh. The first one is a rose. You want a fresh rose flower. I tried to find the best dry rose flower, but I don't get uh, the equal quality of the rose water from making from uh, the fresh rose flower. And the second one is like uh, the orange peel. If you use a fresh orange peel, you get a much more essential oil compared with the dry ones. But for the uh, most of the others, fresh or dry herbs can both be used. The dry herbs because have the less water, so you can make a more potent or concentrated uh, hydrosol or more oil. The second question is, can we make essential oil at home? It really depends on the herbs. As we know, herbs has a very low essential oil composition. For the highest, they can become a 1%. That means when you make a, a one milliliter of essential oil, you need at least 100 gram of essential oil. But for some of the herbs, like a rose, you can only get a one drop of essential oil from the 1,000 of uh, the rose flowers because it has a super low essential oil composition. So when you are trying to make some essential oil, the first one you pick uh, the best part of uh, the herb, like uh, the parts we talked about in the last question and then you have a larger volume of uh, distillation as we recommend use the LT3000 to make essential oil and hydrosol. And the other benefits of using the LT3000 is it can be extended. The column can be doubled to make a, a two liter volume of this, uh, the column. So you can double your yield of oil and hydrosol. So KD5 is more easy to set up and uh, you don't need uh, the water tank because it's a short term distillation. You can just replace for four, five, six times with S cubes. Then you can finish your the batch distillation. Take less space 
and it's easy to set up and it's quick. Then go to the third question, can we make a hydrosol at home? The answer is definitely yes. You can make any hydrosol from herbs, from any herbs. Um, hydrosol is made through the distillation and extracting those volatile compounds out of the herbs and go into the water. Because of these uh, essential compounds existing in the hydrosol, it gives you the medicinal benefits uh, that can be used to make your skin care, the hair care, the products, and some of them even you can make uh, use a uh, tonic water to drink. So now we go to the fourth question, what is the difference between hydrosol and essential oil? From the term you can see the essential oil that is the oil phase of the distillate, that is uh, the part which are not dissolved, not soluble in water, and it become oil normally flow on top of the water phase that's the hydrosol. So hydrosol is the water phase of the distillate. It contains the water soluble compounds and also those dispersed oil in the hydrosol. This only happen for your homemade or fresh made hydrosol. If you buy the hydrosol on the market, because the essential oil has a higher price, so they do a double extraction from the hydrosol. They capture all the dispersed oil and save into the essential oil. So their water is more like just water. And hydrosol will make at home because it first it contains those water soluble compounds and those compounds need to dissolve into the water before they saturate it and make it into the oil. And also it has a dispersed oil that make your hydrosol, especially from the high oil content herb, look cloudy. So that's the benefits of your making your fresh hydrosol at home. Now the fifth question is we talk about distillation. There are two general ways of distillation. The first one is called a steam distillation and the second one is a hydro distillation. Hydro distillation is uh, before the distillation, the, you mix the herb with water in the pot and start the boiling and capture the steam. For this way, the benefit is uh, it's easy because you just need a one pot. Uh, most of the commercial or small uh, factories they use this way because it's easy, easy for them to set up. The problem is the you need a best ratio between the herb and the water. So you don't just uh, throw the herb in and randomly add in the water. The best ratio between the herb and the water is one to five. A lot of audience was asking, what is the ratio of uh, water and herb? So when we design the distiller, we design the steam distillation, uh, I will talk later. For that case, you don't care about how much water you add uh, in the pot because you don't mix them. But for the hydro distillation, the best ratio is important because the essential compounds will dissolve in the water before they vaporize. So you cannot have a, a huge amount of water with a small amount of herb. That we, for that case, the most of the, the distillate you got is just the distilled water. The second one is a steam distillation. That is uh, the herb is on top of the water. It don't mix with water, but only the steam will pass through the herbs. For this case, the benefits is first that you don't worry about you know how much water you add in the pot because only the steam will pass through so it will not uh, dilute uh, like hydro distillation you don't dilute your essential compounds in the pot of the water it, the steam just goes through that so for each individual second the herb are more way more than the steam for most of the cases um, so it's 
purely extracting process. It's uh, much more efficient. And uh, the other benefit, it's easy to control. When you are mixing the herb with water, you want to worry about, you know, overburning. So you don't want your herb settle down at the bottom of the pot during the distillation. So they may burn because the bottom is the highest temperature. Uh, even the water temperature is constant, but at the bottom of the pot, it's hotter. It's much hotter. So hydrosol is uh, very good to use as a beneficial to our skin and hair. Um, but the question is, how to make the best quality hydrosol? Before we answer the question, let's think about the way we are extracting the chemicals, the compounds out of the herb. The herb is protected by the shell. So when the steam goes through it and it opens the shell and releases those volatile compounds. And this process can be quick because it has a high heating energy within the steam. So the process is like the most, it goes up quickly and then gradually goes down the concentration of these essential compounds within the hydrosol. So when we are doing the distillation, we always see it's very condensed either through your smell or the color of the hydrosol like uh, very cloudy in the beginning and then gradually change and fade it away. So this makes us a general rule to make the best quality hydrosol is one to one. That means if you have a KD5 that is a two cup size, you expect to make uh, the highest quality hydrosol two cups. So that is one part of the hydrosol made from one part of the herb. And if you use the LT3000, you expect to make uh, one liter of the high concentrated, high quality hydrosol from uh, one batch of distillation. But this is a general rule. If you using like a condensed material, uh, for example, the bark or the root, you can get a more the concentrated hydrosol. There's a, a easy way you can test it. It's uh, you take a sample and when you distill and at a certain time and after a certain time, you take another sample and use your the instinct like a smell or the vision to tell the difference. The last question I'm going to answer today is what is the difference between the distillation and the infusion? For distillation, we already talked so much. It's a steam distillation, it's a heat extraction and water extraction process. Um, infusion is more like a solvent extraction, like a tea. It's uh, infused with hot water, that's called a tea. Infused with alcohol, it's called a tincture. Or infused with oil, as you made an infused oil. Or infused with a glass ring, you make a glass ride. Or infused with a boiling water, it's called a decoction. So, the infusion is a solvent extraction process. You use the solvent, either water, alcohol, oil, to extract those soluble compounds, relatively soluble, in this solvent. Distillation is on the other side. It's a steam, the heat extraction. So mostly driving by the heat. So that's why Distillation make the volatile compound. The volatile compounds are all small molecules. This portion of the chemical are unique. They bring the aroma of the flower like a rose water. When you have a good quality rose water, you smell almost like rose. When you have a good quality lavender water, you smell a quite close with lavender. There's a little difference because the heat changed the chemical form but they are still in the same family. And these chemicals, the most of them have their nature function to repel the insects, repel 
the virus bacteria to protect the plants and also keep attract those pollinator like bees and this give its uh, beneficial the medicinal benefit to our human and uh, the other part of infusion it will extract uh, any chemicals it can be dissolved for example color color is very popular in all of the infused uh, products no matter tea oil or tincture but you don't see color in the distillation the hydrosol because the color are large molecules they don't reprise they don't go same thing happened to sugar sugar can go into your infused especially the water but they don't go into your hydrosol but some larger mole molecules the beneficial molecule like tiny they go into infused but not into the hydrosol so the difference you can tell like uh, hydrosol has more small molecules they have an aroma and they give the benefits of anti-inflammation antiseptic antibacteria and this part more like a flavonoids they have a sugar they have a color they have a other more like a large molecules they bring the benefits so, so these are the eight questions that I think is quite important for you to know in order to begin your distillation or even go a little bit further if you already start the distillation so to know more uh, your process uh, hopefully you learned something today uh, please like the video subscribe the channel see you next time